As is well known, Wei Xu is a good person. This is a story about a former empress who was overthrown and brought back to life with her heavyweight descendants. Wei Xu. Cough cough, everyone, what I want to say to you is. I am your ancestor. This article is purely fictional, please do not rely on evidence. Keywords of the novel Wei Shu No Pop Up, Wei Shu TXT Complete Collection Download, Wei Shu Latest Chapter Reading. Chapter 1 Resurrection You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Resurrection The cloudy sky is like a cover, and the air is filled with a damp and cool rain. With a loud rumble, a scorching thunder rolled over the horizon, causing the ground to tremble in waves. Immediately after, raindrops fell with a clattering sound, causing a buzzing sound in Wei Xu's ear. Her head seemed to have been shaken unconscious, and she felt dizzy and unable to concentrate. She smelled the faint fishy smell of the soil. The muddy smell with the scent of grass and trees, mixed with rich water vapor, makes my ears and eyes slightly cold. Shouldn't I have already passed away? I still remember the last thing I saw in my eyes was the desolate sky covered by endless arrow rain. The sky in the imperial city is really low. At the moment when Wei Shu lay on the brick floor, she felt the coldness of her body, as if the arrow array had turned into a rain of ice, piercing her heart and soul. Ten thousand arrows pierce through the heart, exposing the corpse in the wild. This is the final game of Wei Shu, the third emperor of the Liang dynasty. Inheriting the mandate of heaven, I should be entrusted to heaven. Heaven wants to destroy me, but why? For no reason, the last words of Emperor Yuan of Liang rushed into her mind, but Wei Shu only wanted to laugh in her heart. Rather than saying that heaven wants her to die, it is human desire for her to die although separated by the long steps and the spacious Qingtian platform, she still recognized the figure hiding among the rebels at a glance. That is the deposed Liang Tu. She is also the emperor who was mistaken by her. She had no regrets for the moment when her heart softened. That was ultimately the child she raised by beating her children, even if they had no bloodline connection. However, without this child by her side, she would not have been able to return to the capital under the name of Empress Dowager Weishu and bring Emperor's third son, let alone climb the throne step by step based on this. Wei Shu tightened her fingertips. The smooth texture overlaps with the rough cocoon marks, and under the palm of the hand is dry soil with a fresh scent of grass and trees. This is not my body. She thought to herself. This is also not the imperial city. She then thought again. She died under the arrow, when blood flowed into a river and her body was covered in bruises, but now the soil under her hands was very dry, and the only pain on her body came from her heart. The pain was dull and burning, as if the blood flowing through the heart and lungs was carrying a sharp knife. This is an internal injury, not an external injury under the arrow formation. Moreover, how could there be such rich soil in the imperial city and below the twin towers? The magnificent palace built by Emperor Yuan of Liang, which took ten years to construct, was as hard as iron with bricks and no grass growing in the gaps. Wei Shu carefully sensed the things under her body, and soon discovered that her left cheek seemed to be pressing against something, with burrs piercing the ground. She couldn't help but take a daze. In the southern part of our country, there is a small mat woven with bamboo strips, which is the coolest and most refreshing. In the hot summer season, it is often used as a pillow for mothers, and they also hold their young brothers to play on the mat. Homeland Empress Mother Father King The drifting thoughts were frozen by the bone-chilling chill, and Wei Shu's eyebrows gradually became cold. Even though she could feel the chill in her breath, the wind echoed with her breathing, and a few strands of hair rubbed against her forehead, itching a bit. Where am I? Why wake up in an unfamiliar body? This body her furrowed eyebrows gradually gathered together. Three inches below the navel in the body, a hot current is surging rapidly. Warm, strong, and mellow, surging like the Yangtze River. As she thought about it, 
Wei Shu suddenly had an illusion in her mind, as if she saw the majestic waves three inches below her navel heading straight towards the heart mouth poison tail acupoint, then passing through various acupoints such as Tanjong, Lianxuan, and Wanggong, reaching the Guanyuan and Xinkei acupoints, and finally returning to poison tail and returning to Dantian. This is a small Sunday. She almost came up with this idea with great familiarity and fluency. Cycle after cycle, endless and endless. With each round of Xiao Zhou's journey through his acupoints, his limbs and bones are heated and lively, as if containing infinite power. Wei Xu took a light breath. Long and powerful breaths, even in the wet and cold rain, do not feel damp and turbid, but are as light as good silk. Each breath can be pulled very long, and the interval between breaths is at least five times slower than before, and the inhaled air reaches deep into the lungs. She couldn't help but pinch her palm again. Her fingers were as warm as holding a charcoal stove, no longer as cold as a woman in her forties and twenties, but full of vitality and energy. Wei Xu suddenly had a feeling that even in the face of a huge rock at this moment, she could smash it with a single punch. If Emperor Yuan of Liang's five stone jade tendon and iron tire bow were on her side, with her strength at this moment, she would not feel tired even if she fired hundreds of times. I, what's going on? Why is the body so healthy that it is strong? Wei Xu's mind was in chaos, unaware that she was calling herself, I, instead of the usual, I, at this moment, as if she had always been the subject of the former's thoughts. Taking another breath, the heat flow inside the body became more and more smooth, and every small circumference surrounded the body, making the limbs and bones more powerful. This is a power that Wei Xu has never experienced in her life, even in her prime more than twenty years ago, it is not as powerful as it is now. The headache suddenly intensified, thoughts were chaotic and noisy, and some vague shadows swept through her mind. For a moment, Wei Xu seemed to remember something, but in the blink of an eye, everything became vague again, with thick fog and darkness surging up at the same time, and there was no trace of it. With a loud rumble. The thunderous sound was heavy and close, as if a giant had cut through the sky above the clouds. Wei Xu vigorously opened her glued eyelids, her eyes wide open, and the pitch black sky was tearing apart a line of white light. It was pouring rain, and thousands of soldiers and horses were galloping above her head. She stared blankly at the scene, as if it were a split between heaven and earth. Even though the night was as thick as ink, and her gaze was always limited to a square window frame, she still saw it with ecstasy. Suddenly, her earlobe twitched slightly. Someone. A faint and indistinguishable breath came from the side and back. Wei Xu suddenly felt a chill, and the heat flow inside her body also turned as she read. In an instant, all the commotion around her fell to her ears, clear as if she was close to her eyes. The breath was as long as hers, like the ups and downs of flowers and leaves in the storm. It was like the old wood was soaked in the moisture, so it relaxed its texture and softened its outline. If it weren't for the continuous warm flow inside her body, Wei Xu might have mistakenly thought it was the sound of grass and trees in the wind and rain, but now she could tell that it was the sound of human breathing. Someone is holding their breath and hiding in the darkness. Almost at the same time as this thought arose, Wei Xu's heart suddenly froze. Three inches below her navel were like boiling water, and the rushing river was gathering at her waist, knees, and elbows. Her body was lifted, and she floated lightly against the ground, moving forward more than five feet. When she landed, the dust did not rise, like a floating flower boat. Duo followed closely with a muffled sound, which came from the place where she lay prone before taking a breath. Wei Xu's hair turned upside down for a moment, and her warm hands even felt a slight chill. That is clearly the sound of war and the ground clashing, and from the ground vibrations, it can be inferred that this object is exceptionally sharp, and the person who fired it was extremely heavy. Someone wants to kill me. Darling, long time no see. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Wind and Rain. You are listening at novelfull.audio.
Chapter 2 Wind and Rain, Fake Death is Not a Clever Way The voice that followed closely had a cicada-like sharpness, although pressed extremely low, it penetrated through the wind, rain, and lightning, as if the speaker was standing face to face with Wei Shu. This voice gave her an inexplicable sense of familiarity. Soon, a pockmarked square face that she should have been unfamiliar with, but now she is particularly familiar with, broke through the fog in her mind and appeared before her eyes. Hook 8. Wei Xu spoke out the name. Confused but also resolute, he uttered these two words. At that moment, she was like reading a book in the darkness. She is not the one flipping through the pages of the book, nor is she the one holding the lights. The only thing she can do is read. At this moment, the pages of the book clattered and turned to the page belonging to Hook 8. The candlelight slowly moved, revealing some old stories and memories. As a result, she was able to learn a little about the past related to Guba, while more news remained hidden in the darkness. What are you doing here? Wei Xu continued, in order to calm the tumultuous sea of anger in her heart. This is not my voice. She thought to herself. But in the next moment, she suddenly had the idea that, this is my voice. At the age of fifteen or sixteen, like a flower bud, she once had such a delicate throat voice, but now she is over forty years old. The man named after him did not respond, as if he had retreated into the darkness. In an instant, the chill was like a maggot on the tarsal bone, suddenly crawling all over Wei Xu's body. Warm currents rose up in her body, gathering in her waist and abdomen, and condensing on her elbows and knees. Wei Xu once again swiftly swept three feet against the ground in an inexplicable posture, then twisted her waist and body, touching the ground with one knee. At the same time, her left hand had already penetrated her sleeve, and she clasped three small, cold iron tools in her palm. When the sharp blade lightly touched her fingertips, Wei Xu immediately traced their shapes in her mind. One and a half inches long, shaped like a pen tip, with a single dot-sided blood groove. These are three iron cones made of refined iron, and they are also my habitual hidden weapon. She thought in a daze. From lying down on her stomach to lying on the ground on guard, this movement was like flowing clouds and water, and the warm breath in her body also moved more freely. Even for Wei Shu, this was only the second time, but her body seemed to have been tempered and could make the most accurate judgment without much thought. A torrential rain poured down, and the rain whips tirelessly swung against the eaves, as if to smash the fallen temple. In the darkness, two people silently faced each other, fearing each other but full of murderous intent. At this moment, Wei Shu was already able to see everything in front of her. The warmth within her body not only gave her unimaginable strength, but also made her hear and see clearly, and even her thoughts seemed to be clearer. She not only saw clearly the low and dilapidated wall outside the straight window of a dilapidated temple she was currently in, but also saw clearly the hook eight, who was dressed in good clothes and looked like an old farmer, five feet ahead. Wei Xu has never seen this person before. However, memories of Guba appeared in the mist of my mind, and there were also records of several encounters with him in the book. A headache struck, intensifying the entanglement of these two memories. Wei Xu took a deep breath and her lungs were soaked in the cold air, suppressing the sudden dull pain. At this moment, Gubo was lying low, expressionless, holding his weapon horizontally in his hand. An iron hook. The hook tip made of wrought iron is only about an inch long, resembling the fangs of a hungry wolf, emitting a faint cold light in the night. The curved hook body was covered in rust, as if it had not been polished well for many years, and the yellow-brown spot spread all the way to the front end of the hook handle before abruptly stopping. Wei Xu felt a chill in her heart. She knows the malice of this weapon. Even if the skin is only scratched by the hook tip, the rust attached to it can still enter the flesh. The wound it breaks is extremely dangerous. If the dirt in the blood cannot be removed and detoxified in time, even if there is only a trace of contamination in the internal organs, it is still a near-death situation, and it is difficult to save immortals when they come. 
At this moment, Wei Xu was not surprised by her familiarity with this weapon, just as she knew clearly that Hook 8 was coming to kill her. This abandoned mountain temple is the killing formation he set up. Although she didn't understand where the other party's intention to kill came from, Wei Xu knew that she also wanted to kill him. Even more so, her killing intent is stronger than Hook 8. She urgently wants the other party to die. I raised my hand and wiped it on the corner of my lips. Unexpectedly, I wiped off my wet and sticky palms, and the fishy sweetness in my throat hit my nose. Wei Xu couldn't help but retch twice. This body has suffered serious internal injuries. She was inspired by such thoughts. Dripping blood from the mouth and nose is a sign of internal injury, and occasionally there is a feeling of extreme in and cold at the three-inch dantian below the navel. When internal energy passes through the heart and lungs, there is also a very familiar sense of obstruction, as if the body has lived in this feeling for a long time. Wei Xu allowed her thoughts to run according to a certain convention and also made an initial inference about the current situation. Borrowing a corpse to revive a soul. There is no more fitting argument than this. Before Wei Xu woke up, the strand of soul that should have existed in this body had already disappeared due to severe injuries. Wei Xu replaced her. And the memories that should have belonged to her were sealed deep in her mind, only occasionally touched but not fully understood. As the thought fell, the Dantian area suddenly became hot, and the hot energy surged to the wrist in an instant. After a slight pause, it quickly split into three streams. A long and condensed stream, a short and strong stream, a curved and convoluted loop, each with a hidden hidden power. Whoosh! Three iron cones were released, but there was only one sound of breaking through the air. Hook Ba seemed to have anticipated it earlier, but he didn't want to step on the ground with his heels. His body swept towards the sky like a swift arrow. Almost as soon as he jumped up, the first iron cone flew past the soles of his boots. He twisted his waist in mid-air and lifted his five-foot deadly hook in the opposite direction. With a loud bang, the second iron cone collided with the hook body, and the thick internal force attached to the hidden weapon made his tiger's mouth tingle, his chi and blood move slightly, and half of his arm stiffened with a breath. He let out a cold snort, his body moved sideways, and the hunting suit wind lifted the broken window paper. The hook tip of the probe rotated half a circle and extended upwards, perfectly fitting the beam above his head. At that moment, the third iron cone had quietly arrived behind him. Hook Ba seemed to have eyes on his back, his shoulders slightly raised, and his body quickly curled up like a spirit ape. He flipped over and jumped onto the beam, then bent down and immediately turned his hand to explore his back. There was a tiny crack in the back of the outer robe, probably due to being blown by the strong wind of the iron cone, but the soft armor was secure. He slightly lowered his body, secretly adjusting his breathing, and lowered his eyes towards Wei Shu. His killing intent surged, but he remained silent. None of the three hidden weapons were hit, and Wei Shu also had a feeling of getting used to it, as if she had fought with Hook Ba countless times. She knew the way that the iron hook was handled, just as the other party knew her very well, so she accurately calculated the trend of her three hidden weapons. However, how can all things in this world remain unchanged? Just like Wei Shu, who was originally a princess of the state of Wei and later became the empress of Daliang, but overnight became a fugitive who died in a great fire, a widow with a son, an empress dowager who assisted the young emperor, and an empress who ascended to the throne. Until now, she has become an unknown and unknown 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 person. Looking up slightly and gazing at the man perched on the top of the beam, Wei Shu leaned aside with her hand hanging from her waist, and the iron handle wrapped in mulberry hemp was already in her grasp. She drew her sword. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Who is Fast? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Who is Fast, Do You Also Use a Sword? With his eyes fixed on the young girl holding the sword in front of him, Guba couldn't help but laugh. His tone was clear, you deserve it. 
I don't know how many times I've told you the truth of, too much to chew. Sigh. The man shook his head regretfully and looked at Wei Xu as if he was looking at a dead person. You're still too young, Arrow Eleven. You young people have suffered losses because you've suffered too little. Wei Xu remained silent, but her heart seemed to stir up turbulent waves. This black iron sword has been stuck on the ground for a long time, and after two movements, she happened to land on the side of the sword and reached out to retrieve it. This was laid before, she fainted, and Wei Xu involuntarily followed her pre-arrangement and held the sword in her hand. The handle of the sword, made of all iron, has a chilling effect that penetrates the bottom of the wrist. A strange feeling surged in Wei Xu's heart, as if this long sword was her hand, communicating with her mind and knowing every thought of her. Compared to this, the peculiar nickname Arrow Eleven was intentionally or unintentionally overlooked by her. This also seems to come from her instinct. When facing a strong enemy, one must not be distracted. Facing the mocking gaze of Go Ba, Wei Shu suddenly bent her finger and flicked her sword. Zheng, with a clear and resolute sword sound, her indifferent voice also sounded at this moment. It's about to collapse. Before he could finish speaking, Go Ba suddenly felt a hollow in his feet, and then he heard the beam let out an unbearable sob, causing it to collapse with a loud bang. The sarcasm on his face finally dissipated. He suddenly remembered that he didn't seem to hear the sound of the hidden weapon landing. With the direction of those three tarsal bone soul grabbing cones, at least two of them landed on a brick ground, and the other one emerged as a broken window, but none of these sounds appeared. Where did they fall? In the blink of an eye, the big beam shattered in the air, and Hook Ba was in a falling state. He couldn't find a place to borrow force for a while, so he had to sink into the elixir field in one breath, intending to accelerate the landing and find another opportunity to kill the enemy. Wei Xu Chang took a breath, stepped forward, and raised his sword to pick it up. There are no fancy moves, and the moves that are handed out by Ping Ping become outdated with little room for maneuver. In the darkness, a faint hissing sound could be heard, and a gust of wind surged in from the damaged doors and windows. The sword energy burst into the air, and the sound was like a crack in silk. Hook Ba couldn't help but feel a slight chill in his heart. At that moment, his whole body seemed to be shrouded in this sword, almost unavoidable, and there was also a sound of wind and thunder in the direction of the blade. That's not the wind and rain outside the window, but the resounding sound of swords. Sword without regret. This sword has a chilling sword intent. When did she learn such superb swordsmanship? The hooked eight eyebrows and eyes were cold, and the downward momentum became increasingly rapid. Wei Xu's mood at this moment was actually not so calm. She has never used a sword, nor does she know hidden weapons, nor is she familiar with these short combat moves. But at present, she is all skilled, just like the teasing on this sword at this moment, which is like the style of a rotten street setting fire to the sky. When the sword move was delivered, this name appeared in self.defense Shu's heart, and her internal energy also changed according to her memory. Tian Tu and Shan Zhong are centered, Tzu Qi, inner and outer gates should be connected, Qi Hai, Blood Hai Jian Ho, Lai Ke, Tai Yuan, He Gu, and the Han Shao Yin and Han Shao Yang meridians are the vanguard, arranged in a staggered manner on the shoulders, elbows, waist, knees, and wrists, just like a marshal deploying troops and generals, using every component of his strength in the most critical areas. It's just a move to set fire to the sky. Hook Ba also recognized Wei Xu's move at a glance. This is an extremely ordinary sword move that is not difficult to deal with. If he is on flat ground, he has at least 139 methods to break this move, and there are infinite variables in the subsequent counter kill. Unfortunately, at this moment, others were still in mid-air, and at a time when old strength had exhausted and new strength had not yet emerged, the cold sword energy was already imminent. At this moment, the machine was truly skillfully grasped, causing this low.n sword move to emit a first. Class Killing Intent 
If it were someone else, even if they could avoid it unharmed under this sword, they would still lose their breath and be taken advantage of by the enemy. However, Wei Xu seemed to have forgotten one thing. Her opponent is Hook 8, and the weapon of Hook 8 is Hook. Both hooked and connected, it can wield all the powerful soldiers in the world, which is the most cunning aspect of the hook weapon. The first line of victory lies entirely in this. Hook Ba suddenly exhaled and let out a loud roar, while hooking his left hand and swinging his right palm repeatedly. Bang bang bang, the broken beams and beams were shattered in the air. The wooden spikes, like arrows, were wrapped in a strong wind and directly attacked Wei Shu's vital acupoints. Meanwhile, Hook Ba's left hand iron hook flexibly turned, and the fangs of the hook tip were scorching with cold light. Choke, with a loud snap, the curved hook landed on the sword body without bias. The timing is just right. The eight hooked hearts were determined, and the surging force stored in the curved hook suddenly turned from rigid to soft. Under the sticky spell, the sword tip was firmly hooked. Both hands can hold the hook, and the left hand is more flexible than the right hand. This is the unique skill of Hook 8, known to a total of nine people. These nine people have naturally become dead, and adding one more person will make this number a whole number. The long sword and iron hook instantly tightened, and two internal forces, one heavy and one thick, trembled and held each other. With another breath, the piercing sound of the intersection of soldiers and iron rang out in the darkness. The rusty iron hook swiftly slid down the tip of the sword, approaching Wei Xu's hand holding the sword. A cold and gentle force also used this force to pull and push horizontally. The iron sword was unexpectedly swung open with a move, and Wei Xu involuntarily turned half of her body. At this point, the counterattack was no longer successful, and the wooden thorn in front of her arrived. She had to distract herself and use her empty hand to scatter it, causing the door to open wide for a moment. Hook eight fists, making it easy to hit the door at this moment. Wei Shu smelled a sweet and greasy aroma. That is emitted from the tiger on the hook eight middle finger. In the darkness, the sharp iron spikes emitted a deep green light, eerie like snake eyes. A despicable person, using poison. Wei Shu let out a loud roar. Pup, the sound of the sharp blade piercing into the flesh sounded, and the air suddenly solidified. The strong wind passed through the vertical window, and the broken window paper was finally blown away, falling to the ground. Hook Ba lowered his head and looked at his fist. His fist stopped in front of Wei Shu, and the green thorns almost touched the delicate tip of his nose, but no matter how hard it was to penetrate. He frowned with some confusion. The next breath, the icy cold in his throat grabbed him, as if a huge hole had suddenly broken there, and the cold wind poured in, gradually taking away his body temperature. He slowly and slowly lowered his head, with a blurry black light visible everywhere. Suddenly, the black light began to flow, and water receded from his throat. The intense crimson color poured down like rain, illuminating the white and tender palm where the black light fell. The scene in that moment was beautiful and enchanting, with red, white, and black intertwined, which made Guba look a bit dazed. Then, a distant and distant voice seemed to come to his ear. Is fist fast or sword fast? At the age of seventeen, his master once asked him this question, and his answer at that time was. I'm fast. Yes, he has always been fast, faster than all his opponents, so he lived until he became hooked. But now, someone faster than him has appeared. End of this chapter. Chapter 4. Wood Esprosium. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 4 Wood Esprosium Wei Shu carefully took a half step back, avoiding the stiff fist in front of her. She curved her lips and hooked her head with a smile, then opened her lips and uttered two words. Zong Feng. After speaking, she bent down to pick up the iron sword that fell to the ground and inserted a short black gold sword that was only a few feet long back along the hilt. The hidden edge in the sword is her final move. That iron sword is specially made, 
with another heaven and earth in it, and the one that pierces the hook eight is the short sword hidden inside. Wudi. This is the name given by her. In the martial arts world, the hidden weapon in this type of sword is called Zimu sword, but she seems to be very indifferent to this name and has changed it to the current Zangfeng. At the thought of this, the books in the darkness suddenly flipped rapidly, and Wei Shu's heart beat faster for no reason. However, the candle beside the scroll suddenly went out at this moment, and Wei Shu only had time to see a few fragments. She has been secretly learning swordsmanship all along. Carrying everyone behind their backs, avoiding malicious gazes, tirelessly preparing her true killer weapon day and night. Tsangfeng is the biggest secret, which was originally unknown but now has been revealed by Guba. However, in a moment, the secret will become a secret again and no longer be known to people. Hook 8's fist drooped weakly. His throat has been pierced with a sword. Although the blade of the woody sword was only one finger long, its sword energy shattered his meridians like withering and decay, pouring blood onto his front, scorching hot and fresh, as if there was a burning sensation in his chest and abdomen. But he is getting colder and colder. Dan Tian is exhausted, tendons and veins are broken, and fatigue is spreading throughout the body. Guba really wants to lie down now and have a good sleep, preferably never waking up. But he still struggled to stand still, widened his eyes, and looked at the familiar yet unfamiliar girl in front of him. The girl has beautiful eyebrows and eyes, a calm aura, and the scars on her forehead are like in the past. The little girl has grown up, but he always remembers when she was young, she loved to suck her little hand and laugh at people, that look was very cute. And just now, when he saw the figure breaking through the window, he was actually surprised. When encountering an enemy, one should be startled first, and then their momentum will weaken by three points. In a daze, the gentle voice of the master seemed to ring out again, and Guba's expression gradually softened. Even a smile appeared on his lips. Very good. He hoarsely spoke, with no resentment in his tone, only an indescribable relief, as if he had let go of a heavy burden. There's a well in the backyard, he said again. The broken throat bone was making a strange, grid sound, and his voice became increasingly trembling and indistinguishable. Be careful. And. Jade. He took his last breath and slammed his body into the ground. There is indeed a well in the backyard, with a straw shed standing upside down on the edge of the well, barely sheltering from the wind and rain. Guba did not deceive anyone. However, there was one thing he seemed to forget to say. There is a corpse hanging on the edge of the well. Wei Shu lifted her hand and wiped away the rain from her face, struggling to look ahead. The upper half of the corpse was hanging inside the well, while the lower half was dragged outside the well. The whole person seemed to be divided in half by the well wall, hanging softly, making Wei Shu inexplicably think of the chickens and ducks hanging upside down to control blood after being slaughtered. The wind in early spring soaked the skin and bones, and the thatched shed shook in the rainstorm, while the sky light was slightly white, as if it was brighter than before. Wei Shu turned her head and looked around. The scenery in front of her seemed to be shrouded in a layer of fog. It took her a while to see clearly. This fashion was still in the middle of the morning, and the darkness that seemed like night was actually caused by heavy rain. Now that the rain has slightly decreased, the sky has also slightly recovered. However, the dusk still lingers. Wei Shu wiped her face again, sweat mixed with rainwater dripping down, and in an instant, her cheeks were wet again. She carried the body of Hook Ba, gritted her teeth, and moved step by step to the well. Her footsteps had not yet stopped, and her chest was already filled with blood and chi. Waves of annoyance and disgust surged up, and a faint sweet smell emanated from her throat. The feeling of air penetrating through the bones and blood penetrating through the bones had already disappeared in the moment when a sword pierced through the throat of Hook Ba. Wei Shu has been trying to suppress herself, fearing that Hook Ba will fight back before she dies. Now, the body of the enemy is on her back, while Wei Shu is obviously not as powerful as the Bai Shi carrying the tombstone. 
The dozens of steps from the main hall to the backyard almost exhausted her physical strength. Shaking her body, the heavy body of self-defense shoe rolled off her back, and the shrouding leather spread out, revealing a semi-old soap boot. Looking at the messy blood and mud on the soles of her boots, Wei Shu could no longer hold on and supported the thatched hut, vomiting. Dantian feels like a knife-cutting pain, the cold in cold cuts through the meridians, but occasionally it burns like fire. The limbs and bones seem to be alternately boiled by snow water and intense fire, causing a moment of blood and pulse dilation, and a moment of body coldness like ice. Wei Shu's fingers were tightly gripping the wooden railing, and a large amount of sweat oozed from her forehead. The injury has become increasingly severe. She vaguely remembered that her body seemed to have been secretly injured earlier, with obstructed heart and lung meridians, and she had never fully recovered. Today, she was suddenly attacked by Guba and was hit by his palm in the back, causing her to die on the spot. However, this palm also briefly pierced through the blocked meridians, causing a surge in blood and energy. By the time Wei Shu woke up, her body had already regained eight successful powers. However, this external force was too fierce, and while opening up the meridians, it also exacerbated the old injuries. Now that both new and old injuries have accumulated, the symptoms are actually more severe than before. Fortunately, she has a strong internal breathing, but now she can still suppress it. But with less than 20% of his martial arts remaining, if he were to hook eight again, he would undoubtedly die. Wei Shu sat down by the well, panting heavily. She closed her eyes and breathed for a while, finally gathering some strength before finally regaining her energy and removing the body hanging by the edge of the well. The blood stains on the corpse had dried up, and all the clothes were damp. It was evident that they had been hanging on the edge of the well for a while. When Wei Shu flipped it over, she saw a withered, leather-like face, with no blood on her lips or nails. The deceased was not too old, but his eyebrows and eyes were also clean, and he was considered a upright young man before his death. On the body and limbs of the corpse, there were accumulated old wounds that seemed to be frequently whipped, his palms and shoulders were covered in calluses, indicating that he had been doing rough work all year round, in addition, there are also patchwork marks on this person's middle garment, with very fine stitching, the outer garment is a robe that is neither green nor blue. The material of this robe is quite smooth, but the style is a bit peculiar. A front, straight body, high collar, resembling the color of barbarian clothing, but the appearance of the deceased is no different from that of people from the central plains. It was Hook Ba who killed him. The wound on the victim's throat coincides perfectly with the five-foot deadly hook, and there are still some rust residues deep inside the wound. Besides, there were no new wounds on the man's body, and his clothes were clean and tidy, which seemed like a fatal move. Even if this person knows martial arts, he is not as skilled as Hook 8. Wei Shu quickly made the above inference and immediately raised new doubts. Why did Guba kill a non-martial alien? It's been a long time since the book was published, and I forgot to ask for a ticket. If you have monthly and recommended tickets, please vote for them. Thank you. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Old Dreams You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Old Dreams Wei Shu stared at the young man's face, trying to remember something, but the darkness remained the same, and the mist remained the same. She probably doesn't know this person, otherwise she should have some impression. Wei Shu thought so. She really wanted to figure out the key point, but two corpses were placed in front of her, with a constant buzzing in her mind, as if there were thousands of voices talking to her at the same time. However, she couldn't hear a word clearly, and dizziness hit from time to time. The intersection of hot and cold in the Dantian area was even worse than before. Let's clean up the beginning and end first. After resting on the thatched shed for a moment to catch her breath, Wei Shu got up with her hands and feet on the ground and began to dispose of the corpse. Strange thoughts kept popping up in her mind, and her technique was unusually skilled. At the same time, a name vaguely appeared before her eyes. Kang. 
this is obviously her memory again. Wei Xu found that only when touching the corresponding people, things, or objects, would the books in the darkness flip and the candles illuminate, and she could also read those necessary or corresponding people, things, or objects. Just like the hook ate just now, and the Kang River that she was thinking of now. The thoughts gradually dissipated, and Wei Shu remembered the strange name that Guba had awakened. Arrow 11. This is her name. Hook 8, Arrow 11. It's just as bizarre and absurd as before. Wei Shu repeatedly pondered these two names and speculated that she and Go Ba were likely to be together, at least once. This can be seen from their familiarity with each other's martial arts techniques and their similar nicknames. Apart from the two of them, Wei Shu speculated that there might also be strange names like Knife 7, Gun 10, Axe 13, corresponding to each person. They. No, who are we? The thought suddenly flashed through her mind, her head buzzing for a moment, and a strong and sweet smell surged from her throat. Wei Shu couldn't help it anymore, and she opened her mouth, wow, and spewed out a mouthful of blood. It seemed like thousands of steel needles had been inserted into the elixir field, and suddenly the sky spun around. The well wall tightly against her back blocked Wei Shu's collapsed body. Her face turned pale and she trembled all over. She closed her eyes and leaned against the well, panting heavily, with a burning pain in her chest and back. The palm of Hook 8 probably used 120% of its strength, and its soft armor was already shattered. Wei Shu touched her back with her back, and sure enough, under her thin spring shirt, there were sharp spikes hidden. There is also one piece of soft armor of the same shape called Hook 8. Wei Shu could no longer concentrate on pondering the underlying reasons. Jolin has cracked and no longer has any protective ability. She simply took off her outer garment, took off her soft armor, and threw it aside, then put on her outer garment. Just by doing these things, she was sweating profusely, but her body was shivering and everything in front of her seemed to be spinning. There was a faint thunder ringing in the sky, and the rain seemed to be getting heavier. The cold raindrops carried the cool breeze and brushed against the body, with a sharp chill that slightly reduced the feeling of dizziness. However, the darkness still surged, and the fog in my mind kept rolling. Wei Xu's consciousness gradually became somewhat chaotic. She may have fainted for a while. Or a moment, or a few moments. When she woke up, the rain was still pouring down, but the sky was even darker than before. It's going to rain heavily. Under the vault, a moving cloud rushes away, which is the precursor of rainstorm. Wei Shu struggled to get up, but her hands and feet were weak and weak. She tried several times but failed, and a strong sense of fatigue flooded her body like a tide. Not possible. Tsang River. Needs to go to Tsang River The strong and persistent thoughts in her mind forced Wei Shu to accumulate strength again and finally got up. Standing under the leaky thatched shed, she opened her mouth and sucked in the cold air with all her might. Her legs were as soft as noodles, and she stood there swaying. Venus was shining in front of her, and everything she could see was blurry. She had to close her eyes tightly and try her best to adjust her breathing. After a while, Dantian's Hong's severe pain gradually eased, and the alternating sensation of cold and hot also slightly decreased. When her body regained some strength, Wei Shu immediately picked up the big bundle she had packed before, stuffed the discarded soft armor into it, and stumbled away from the mountain temple. Kang River is not far away, just face north from the temple gate and cross two long streets to reach it. Wei Shu walked back and forth according to her memory, and by the time she turned around, her hand was already empty. Along the way, her mind was not so clear. Fortunately, it was the rain and wind at this moment, and she didn't bump into anyone on the road. She had never encountered any trouble, but it was a stroke of luck. When a corner of the eaves finally appeared in front of her, Wei Shu slowed down. With one hand on the dilapidated wall and the other on her knee, she slowly walked forward with a bent body, and vague thoughts filled her heart. Proficient in killing, skilled in martial arts, 
and skilled in destroying corpses and extermination techniques, all of which are beyond the reach of ordinary people. What exactly is her identity? How could one make such a calm and rapid judgment, and firmly put it into action? Where does her endurance come from? Even though she was exhausted and in great pain, she was able to always hold on to the spiritual platform with a clear vision and use it to extract the remaining energy from her body, achieving her predetermined goals. What kind of experience and past would make a teenage girl have such a strong mind? At her age, Wei Xu was far inferior to others. Hook 8. Arrow 11. An elusive identity my thoughts gradually tangled together, and the feeling of dizziness struck again, as if my body weighed a thousand pounds. Wei Xu didn't know how she walked back to the main hall. As she waited for her cheeks to be covered again with the prickly and tattered crumbs, the familiar touch startled her. She lay down in the same place in the hall, just like the moment of her resurrection. How did I, come back again? Thoughts floated up, darkness surged like a tide, and Wei Xu completely fell into chaos she had a strange dream. Someone is chasing her in her dream. When chasing after the soldiers, it was the private guard of Emperor Yuan, who was heavily armored, and sometimes it was a group of masked people in black clothes, the moment before, the handsome face of the centurion, who was closely guarding her, was still beside her, giving her admiration and satisfaction, the next breath, she faced the black-clad man's encirclement alone, isolated and helpless, only to vigorously pull up her long bow, and the sound of swords and knives whistling like a gust of wind swept by. Then, the fresh blood reddened her vision. She could feel the coldness of Jean Ji's brush, and could also touch the auspicious beast carved on the armrest of the throne of the emperor. Under the Dan Chi, the gloomy expressions of civil and military officials were almost in front of me. Quickly, all of this was shrouded in thick fog, surrounded by boundless emptiness and emptiness. She couldn't see where she came from or where she was going, floating lightly like a rootless flying catkin. A tall and elegant figure slowly emerged from the chaos. A hand with a medicinal fragrance lightly caressed the forehead, cold and trembling, yet inexplicably causing a hint of nostalgia in life. Drink it, Ling Ling whispered, as if the wind was blowing through the hole of the jade pendant. The thick black juice instantly turned into a raging beast, overwhelming the sky and earth, swallowing everything request a ticket. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Shocking Awakens You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Shocking Awakens, Miss Aki. Miss Aki. My body became heavy, and a distant call came from my ears. The voice was rough, slow, and urgent, like a very thin and sharp light, piercing through the thick fog. Wei Xu wanted to open her eyes to see, but it seemed like a mountain was pressing down on her eyelids. Even with all her strength, she couldn't pry it open a single bit. She could only gather her spirit and listen carefully to the increasingly authentic voice. Miss Chi, wake up, wake up quickly. The body was vigorously shaken, and the heat from the thick palm pressed tightly against Wei Xu's shoulder. This feeling was extremely familiar, as if there was also a hand like this in my dream pressing against my wrist. I have had my pulse probed by someone. No, it was me who had my pulse probed by this person. Wei Xu thought vaguely, but her palms suddenly left, followed by a gradually distant sound of footsteps, as if the person pushing her had already walked away. Not long after, the sound of footsteps came from far to near, and a sudden chill poured on the cheeks, just like the ice beads rolling on the face in a snowy weather. The confused mind suddenly regained consciousness, and the shivering chill seemed to lift off the heavy mountain. Wei Xu's eyelids suddenly relaxed, and the sky suddenly surged, filling her sight. In this moment, the sound of wind and rain became particularly clear, and the cold and damp coolness and bright light flooded into her eyes. Wei Xu felt a slight glare and couldn't help but squint her eyes. After a while, she finally managed to see clearly what was in front of her. A man is squatting in front of her. This person is about thirty years old with a leopard head and wide mouth and high forehead. 
There is a prominent black mole under the eyebrows of the slasher, and his appearance is rough, resembling that of a martial arts hero. Unfortunately, he is dressed really. Not pleasing to the eye. In short, there is only one word. Ugly. If summarized in four words, it would be. Extremely ugly. A strong and sturdy man, for some reason, decided to shave off a piece of his forehead, revealing a green and bald scalp. After the scalp was the long hair that had been gathered up, but he never pulled it up. Instead, he tied it into several small braids and hung them at the back of his head, with a fine hemp rope tied to the braid and two copper earrings on his left ear. This is truly an unconventional and bizarre attire. Even the most knowledgeable, elegant, and elegant person would immediately transform into a wild man in such attire. Wei Shu slowly rolled her eyes and her slightly blurred gaze swept over the man's entire body. His figure is very tall, with arms and feet two circles larger than the average person. He wears a pigeon gray colored high neck straight body short robe, which is quite peculiar in style, but it looks quite similar to the clothes of the corpse hanging by the well edge weight, corpses, corpses. That well in the backyard. Wei Shu suddenly flipped over and sat up, her heart pounding in an instant. Suddenly, her eyes turned black and she was almost on the verge of falling. She quickly stabilized her figure with both hands. Hey hey hey, what's going on? What's going on? Miss Chi, please wait a little longer. The man exclaimed, but his body quickly jumped back. It's hard for him to jump so high while squatting on the ground. After landing, he immediately protected his two bare paws on his chest and looked at Wei Shu with an alert expression, still chattering incessantly. Miss Chi, please be clear-headed and speak carefully. Don't take any action. It's me, it's me. Don't you even know me? The noisy noise caused Wei Shu a headache, and her body involuntarily shook a few times. Her forehead was soaked in cold sweat. Shut up, I'm feeling unwell. Oh no, it's me who's in trouble. There's a big deal. Wei Shu wished she could shout out. Previously, she had been busy throwing packages into the Kang River, but the bodies thrown into the well had not yet been buried. Anyone who poked their heads inside could easily see the two corpses that had been stabbed all over their bodies. The purpose of destroying the corpse was to disguise itself, in order to conceal the fatal wound in their throats. After all, the iron hook was too bizarre, and Wei Shu did not want people to know that she was holding Wu Di. As for the bundle thrown into the Tsang River, it was filled with most of the deceased's clothing, blood-stained soil, broken beams, and other important evidence, with the purpose of leaving no trace and trying to conceal the identity of Guba and another person as much as possible. At this point, Wei Shu finally understood why she would return to the ruined temple, but it turned out that she was going to bury the body. Kicking off the well wall and throwing some broken wood into the well would perfectly cover up the body, which was her plan at that time. Unfortunately, human calculation is not as good as natural calculation. Her body couldn't support herself enough to handle the rest of the matter and she collapsed, only then did she wake up. At present. What time is it? Wei Shu propped her arm up on her head and didn't look at the golden stars popping up in front of her. She hoarsely asked the man. My head hurts a lot, and every word I spit out causes a dull pain. Fortunately, the dizziness is fading, and the energy in Dantian has also eased slightly. Ah. Oh. Well, it wasn't long after Chin Chu. The girl didn't hear the bell just now. The man opened his eyes and looked at Wei Shu. Wei Shu shook her head weakly. Originally, she was unconscious all night. After taking a few breaths, she turned her eyes and looked ahead. She is still in the main hall of the Mountain God Temple. Outside the hall, there is already a vast expanse of land, and the accumulated water has submerged most of the plants and trees. Only a small amount of ground under the corridor is still dry. It seems that the rain has also rained all night, and at this moment it is still not small. 
The rain lines on the remaining eaves are like curtains, the distant thunder roars and fluctuates, and the sky is also gloomy like dusk. Suddenly, Wei Xu felt a sense in her heart, and a corner of her eye swept aside to see the man quietly scrutinizing her, with a faint judgment in his eyes, as if weighing the truth of what she was saying at this moment, and as if observing her reaction. Wei Xu's heart twitched slightly, pretending to feel a headache. She covered her head and turned her head to look at the other side of the hall. On the brick floor leading to the backyard, there are two particularly large footprints with fresh water stains on them. Has he been to the backyard? A hint of awe swept through her heart, and Wei Xu's right hand naturally tucked into her sleeve, as if unable to resist the invasion of spring cold. However, her fingertips had already touched the hidden bag sewn by her own hands. The cold touch from the iron cone made her feel a little at ease. At this moment, the bear's paw in front of the man slowly let go, and his judgment was replaced by a more relaxed scrutiny. He still focused on Wei Shu, but his expression appeared cautious. He moved his body forward and looked like he wanted to get closer but didn't dare to. He whispered. How is Miss Chi feeling now? Does her head still hurt? Is there still something uncomfortable on her body? Miss Aki. Is she called this name? It seems. Yes. Wei Shu pretended to cough lightly a few times, then moved her fingers away from her sleeve cage and covered her lips, saying, it's slightly better now, it's not uncomfortable anymore. The Venus in front of her was finally gone, and she did feel a little more relaxed, but her thoughts were still chaotic, with no time or ability to contemplate the meaning of the other person's eye changes. She tossed and turned in her mind and could only think for a moment. What kind of nonsense am I talking about? Seeking Collection and Tickets, End of this Chapter Chapter 7 Foreign Countries you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 7 Foreign countries After speaking several times, Wei Shu finally realized that what she and the man were talking about was an extremely unfamiliar language, with strange pronunciation and pronunciation that she had never heard of before. However, this unheard of and never understood language, Wei Shu not only understood it, but also spoke fluently. Isn't this a big beam? Looking back now, on the way to Kang yesterday, she did indeed see several strange houses. At that time, she was already in a semi-faint state, and even if she saw them, she didn't think much. But now, with closer discernment, she finally realized that this place may not be. Central Plains At the thought of this, Wei Shu suddenly felt a chill in her heart. She was a bit overwhelmed, but there seemed to be a voice whispering to her. Even if this statement is not accurate, it is not far away. Is this really a foreign land? What about my big beam? In an instant, Wei Shu's heart was almost filled with melancholy, even the suspicious man in front of her felt insignificant. My great beam, how are you doing now? Why should I be wandering in this otherworldly world? How vast is the land under her rule? How numerous are the people? It's not good where she threw herself, why did she come to this small country? I'm afraid it may not even be a foreign land of. Wei Shu felt a sense of sadness for no reason, and her hot air all cooled down. Who would have thought that my collapse would bring me to this foreign land? What should I do? Feeling flustered and unable to speak, it is necessary to act as if nothing had happened to avoid arousing suspicion. At this moment, Wei Shu was constantly worried, but she could only cough lightly again, cover up the strange color on her face, and turn her gaze towards the direction of the man. That rough face gradually gave her a sense of familiarity. In the mist, the dark pages of the book quietly opened, and the candle lit up towards one corner. Zhou. Uncle. She called out hesitantly. With this sound, a name suddenly flashed through my mind. Zhou Shang. Yes, Zhou Shang. The name of this rough man is Zhou Shang. Above the dark scroll, the candlelight suddenly lit up, illuminating everything in her memory about Zhou Shang. No, not everything, 
but a few memories. However, even so, dealing with the current situation was enough, and Wei Xu's tense heartstrings were relaxed as a result. Indeed, this Aki girl and Zhou Shang had already known each other, but they have been in frequent contact recently. As I thought about it this way, another name suddenly appeared. Aki's. Yes, Archice. This is the full name of Shi, which is a local abbreviation for Miss Aki, that Zhou Shang just called. It is indeed a foreign land. Wei Xu's heart was gloomy, but a familiar smile had already appeared on her face, and her tone became lively. When did Uncle Zhou come? Seeing that she finally recognized him, Zhou Shang looked relieved and let out a sigh, saying, My mother, you finally recognize someone. As he spoke, he threw out the things in his hand with a clang sound, and the person also sat down. His big hand, like a fan, grabbed his robe and quickly fanned his face, continuing to say. I've been here for a while now, and I didn't expect the girl to come here. I tried to come in and look for her, but to my surprise, she just slept underground and couldn't wake up no matter how she called. I'm really anxious. I was scared half to death, just afraid that the girl might have made a mistake. Miss, you don't know how scary you looked when you talked in your sleep just now just now I said, do it, but now it has become, talk in my sleep, again. Wei Xu glanced suspiciously at the broken tile on the ground. Just now, what Zhou Shang threw away was this thing. At this moment, there was a hint of water shining from the tile. Wei Xu couldn't help but think of the coolness on her face just now, as well as the skilled blocking action of Uncle Zhou before. Zhou Shang also noticed her gaze and chuckled twice, saying, Miss Aki, don't be fooled. There's a reason for everything, there's a reason for everything. You seem to have been haunted by a nightmare just now, and I couldn't help it either. As expected, it was the water you poured on my face. At this moment, Wei Xu did not realize that she had started calling herself, I, again, as if the, I, in her mind had already disappeared elsewhere. After Zhou Shang finished speaking, he forcefully tugged at the collar, as if he felt that the collar was too tight. For some reason, in that moment, a strong disgust flashed through his eyes, as if there was a deep hatred between him and his collar. This emotion came so suddenly that an indescribable and inexplicable meaning began to permeate his body, giving a feeling of fragmentation, as if, clothes are clothes, people are people, and he was completely different from those clothes. How could Miss Aki run to this ghost? This place. Zhou Shangdao, his tone and expression were both very attentive. The feeling of separation surged again. Wei Xu pursed her lips, her pale face showing a bewildered expression, but her mind was rapidly calculating how to answer and use Klitsch A.S. Not wanting to, before she could think it through, Zhou Shang suddenly raised his voice and said, Oh, my God bless me. Finally, I've been taught to see Miss Aki. The child's mother is just as eager for the girl to come as she is for the stars and the moon. She can't wait any longer, so she asked me to come out and invite her. I just went to Jean Felt Lane to ask, and only then did I know that Miss Aki took a leave of absence yesterday and left the mansion. I was afraid that the girl would be anxious to wait, so I found this place all the way. However, it turned out that the girl was hiding from the rain here, but she taught me how to find it these words came suddenly and were spoken with a particularly humble tone, but his voice was particularly bold and loud, almost reaching the door. Moreover, while speaking, he kept gesturing to Wei Xu to pay attention to the outside world with his eyes. There was a heavy sound of footsteps coming from outside. Wei Xu actually heard it a long time ago. Not only did she hear it, but she also knew that it was just a passing pedestrian who had not walked into the temple. Moreover, as the person passed by the temple gate, they deliberately quickened their pace, running frantically all the way forward, panting and murmuring prayers such as, Devil's Revenge, as if they were avoiding this place. However, Zhou Shang was clearly unaware and loudly said, Miss, come with me and go out. This place used to be haunted and unlucky. Let's not get involved in bad luck. I see, 
the pedestrians on the strange path walked so fast. As Wei Xu was thinking about it, she suddenly heard Zhou Shang whispering softly again, Miss Qi, hurry up and leave. It's getting late, and I've put in a lot of effort to find you. Wei Xu nodded and said hello, her gaze sweeping over his almost soaked boots and the corner of his robe splattered with large mud spots. Finally, it landed on his sweaty face. That face was oily, with a tired expression between the eyebrows and eyes. It wasn't just that I had been running around all morning, but I didn't sleep well last night. What was this for? End of this chapter. Chapter 8 7 Kills You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 7 Kills Noticing Wei Xu's gaze, Zhou Shang also realized that his appearance was inappropriate. He quickly lifted his sleeves and wiped his face, then went to brush off his robe with a very earnest attitude, as if he wanted to maintain sufficient etiquette in front of Wei Xu, even if there were only two of them in this hall and no third pair of eyes. Disguise. Playing tricks. Do you have any requests? Or. Is there another conspiracy? What is the relationship between Achilles and him? Wei Xu's heart was filled with deep doubts. However, in the deepest part of her memory, it seemed that Achilles was not surprised by this, as if it was the same as when he and his wife were together on a regular basis. I'll help the girl out. After sorting out the details, Zhou Shang took two steps forward and naturally half-supported Wei Xu to stand up, walking slowly towards the outside of the hall. Wei Xu actually doesn't want to leave at all. She was still thinking about the two corpses in the backyard, but at this moment, the situation forced her to leave and she had to immediately think of a question. Is it clear that there are dead people underground right now, or will we talk later? Hesitation only lingered in the moment, and soon Wei Xu had a plan. Let's talk later. Compared to being transparent on the spot, the latter is obviously more secure. It's not that she's taking chances and hoping that Zhou hasn't seen the body yet, but rather that her current situation is very unfavorable, and speaking rashly is a risky move. Speak less, act more, and look more. Do everything possible to delay time and remember more of the local customs and people, as well as the relatives and friends of this place. Only then can we avoid making mistakes and omissions when we have to speak up. While Wei Xu was pondering, Zhou Shang had already led her along the dilapidated eaves to the outside of the small hill. Then, with a sudden pause in her footsteps, she bowed slightly to Wei Xu and said. The girl's things are all here. I just saw these things and guessed that the girl was sheltering from the rain here. When I came in to search, I did find the girl. Wei Xu followed his gaze and looked out. At the corner of the outer wall of the mountain gate, several things were placed upright. A folded green cloth oil umbrella, a pair of wooden clogs, and a bamboo basket covered with oil cloth. Last night, the rain and wind were raging, and a corner of the oilcloth rolled up on the basket. It was empty inside, indicating that there was nothing left. Is this? Akiza's. The inexplicable sense of familiarity once again surged in her heart, and Wei Shu walked over, putting on wooden clogs and tying a tie with familiarity. Sure enough, the size was just right, and it was truly the object of Achi's. The oil umbrella and bamboo basket must have been deliberately placed there by her. Upon this thought, a fragment from yesterday suddenly appeared in Wei Xu's mind. A kith rushed to the mountain god temple in a hurry despite the heavy rain, left a few items on hand here, and then burst into the main hall no, it's not her first time here. The pages of the book in the darkness suddenly flipped rapidly, and paintings rolled up in front of me. The girl in a blue dress lingers in front of the small mountain gate, the girl in black was patrolling the main hall in the late night, the slender figure in a white dress swayed like a ghost, frightening passers-by to scream and flee, at dawn on a snowy day, the surroundings were silent, and the girl was like a flying swallow, shuttling on the roof of the mountain temple haunted, unlucky, and the presence of monsters in the mountain temple. Rumors have increased in the market, and the mountain temple has gradually disappeared without a trace. In the end, it is abandoned, 
and memories like a lantern stop at this moment, transforming into the final moment. In the pouring rain, the young girl leaped into the main hall like arrows, her fluttering skirt and the sound of hidden weapons breaking through the air concealed her sword-throwing movements. She chose an excellent angle, and the beams, pillars, stones, and decadent statues of the main hall, as well as the wind and rain outside the window, were all her cover. Archice was intentional. Wei Shu suddenly had a realization. The girl frequently appears here, pretending to be a god or a ghost to scare passers-by, gradually making the entrance of the mountain god temple desolate and the streets deserted, in order to turn this place into her and other people who are similar to her favorite place. A rare and tranquil place for killing and throwing corpses, with the ability to attack and defend. This is a game set up by the girl for a year or even longer, in order to lure potential pursuers into a dead end where they believe they have a clear chance of winning. And yesterday's leap through the window was the result of countless rehearsals, including building mud blocks, moving statues, adjusting angles, and so on. Unfortunately, the girl accurately calculated everything, but only missed out on the opponent's surging internal strength. I thought that with profound skills and soft armor to protect my body, I could bravely take a blow from the opponent and then use the hidden blade skill to kill them, but to my surprise, I was killed directly. As the saying goes, human calculation is not as good as heaven's calculation. If that strand of fragrant soul had knowledge under the spring, how would it think at this moment? Wei Xu's thoughts gradually drifted away, and soon a name full of martial arts atmosphere jumped into her mind. Seven kills sealing pulse technique, yes, it is through the use of this skill that the internal strength of Go Ba Ding is greatly increased. In Achi's memory, the other party had received this secret collection a long time ago. This is a technique that temporarily enhances martial arts by retrograde meridians and then blocking them. Each blocking of one meridian can increase one's martial arts by 10%, while if all seven meridians are blocked, the martial arts will double. However, this technique has a fatal weakness, which is that after using the move, one must immediately activate the pulse following meridian, otherwise one will either die or go insane. However, opening the pulse following meridian requires at least 10 breaths of effort. In other words, if the 7 kills sealing pulse technique fails to hit, it is equivalent to offering one's own life and hands to others. Therefore, the reputation of 7 kills sealing pulse technique in the martial arts world is not good, and many people regard it as a crooked path. After a successful surprise attack, if Go Ba did not use any more moves for a long time, it must have been opening the pulse and meridian. If it were not for this, even if Wei Shu regained her soul, she would have died at his hands. Is this also fate's will? Come, Miss Aki, I'll hold an umbrella for you. Zhou Shang's voice began to ring. Wei Shu's head darkened, and she looked up at it. The green umbrella was like an open lotus leaf, with its surface slightly tilted. Most of Zhou Shang's body was outside the umbrella, appearing to be well served. Wei Xu remained calm and raised her hand, lightly brushing her hair and temples. Her gaze swept towards the hood on the umbrella handle, slightly curious. The Daliang dynasty also had Wagaluo umbrellas, which were often used in court ceremonial ceremonies, but the umbrella face was only open and not collected, and it was much larger than this. Nowadays, this umbrella is not only lightweight and compact, but also easy to retract and put, which is quite interesting. From this perspective, it seems that this otherworldly land and foreign land are not completely barbaric and chaotic, and there is still some merit to it. Wei Xu brushed her not wide sleeves and lowered her eyebrows again to tidy up the hem of her skirt. Zhou Shang gave her a strange glance. For some reason, when he lifted the oil umbrella high, the natural and calm demeanor of the girl in front of him made him have a strange idea that, I should have served her. Zhou Shang furrowed his thick eyebrows and immediately released them. Wei Xu also took care of her clothes and turned her head to look over. The two of them, each with their own thoughts, looked at each other with a smile, one carefully welcoming and holding an umbrella, and the other slowly walking out of the temple door. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Desolation 
You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Desolation There are few pedestrians in front of the mountain god temple, but the wind and rain are as dark as darkness. At the end of the alley, an old tree stands alone, with newly sprouted green branches washing away the hustle and bustle of the alley. The rain and wind outside the oilcloth umbrella were sudden, and Wei Xu, walking under the umbrella, gradually felt a hint of confusion floating in her heart. I can't go back. This is neither Daliang nor the Central Plains. Everything she was familiar with was no longer there. Wei Xu's whole heart fell to the ground empty. The road ahead is vast, and the place of origin is also hidden in the darkness. It is impossible to say that one is not confused or worried. Even if a majestic ruler lands in a completely unfamiliar place and places his soul in a completely unfamiliar body, he may feel somewhat at a loss, let alone Wei Xu, who has always had self-awareness. She never saw herself as a remarkable figure, and being able to ascend that throne during the Liang dynasty was just a coincidence of taking advantage of the heavens. After all, her background determines that she is more likely to climb to the top than ordinary people. But now, good luck is clearly not on her side. The assassination of Guba, Zhou Shang's voyeurism, and the mysterious origin of Qixi all indicate that this place is full of danger, and perhaps the next step will be to fall into the abyss. Suppressing her inner unease, Wei Shu followed Zhou Shang out of the alley and turned southeast. Not far away, there is a bustling market with rows of shops and many pedestrians, highlighting the strange and secluded atmosphere of the alley. Wei Xu quickly realized that on the faces of most pedestrians, there was no gentleness after education, only the rudeness and arrogance of outsiders. The clothing, accent, and occasionally seen round topped and pointed houses of the local natives also confirmed her previous speculation. Achis is a foreigner. The feeling of confusion piled up in her chest, and Wei Xu really wanted to sigh. I haven't even understood death yet, but now I'm living a confused life. The only fortunate thing is that the enmity of national destruction, the hatred of killing one's father and humiliating one's mother, and the grudge of children dying in vain have all been avenged, and Wei Xu can be considered to have died well, and can confidently bow down to heaven and earth. I don't know how the ministers will decide on my posthumous title and temple title when the world is settled after my funeral. Choose one from the categories of attack, ink, contradiction, expense, or spirit, seclusion, or offering. In short, posthumous titles must be posthumous titles, and temple names can never be pleasant. Who taught her that Wei Shu is the queen? The nonsense of Muji Sikhen was almost calloused in her ears, and when the rebels invaded the imperial city, they also carried the banner of punishing evil and seeking justice. There is nothing wrong with being infatuated with evil, as long as the country is in hand, no matter what kind of evil or auspiciousness. Wei Xu is quite open-minded about this point. Well, I have already passed away, and the floods are raging. Everyone, what do you love to do? Go ahead, I'm doing pretty well now, has Miss Chi ever had breakfast before? A sentence woke up the dreamer, and Zhou Shang's voice drifted with the aroma of food. Wei Xu's belly was thunderous, and governance was quickly thrown aside. Three big characters quickly came to mind. I'm so hungry. Upon closer reflection, after waking up yesterday, she had never touched her lips with a drop of water for a whole night. At this moment, being stirred up by the street full of fireworks, she was so hungry that she couldn't bear it, scratching her heart and liver. It turned out that the feeling of starving was so embarrassing, and there was still such a loud cry coming from inside her belly. No matter how hard it was, it was something Wei Xu had never experienced before, and she absolutely, absolutely, never wanted to learn again in the future. Sure enough, Miss hasn't had breakfast yet, Zhou Shang joked as he looked at Wei Xu, apparently hearing the commotion inside Miss Aki's belly. Wei Xu was already a bit hungry and panicked. All her strength was gone, and she just let out a faint hmm from her nose as a response. I am really down and out. Wei Xu's eyes were almost turning red. 
On the second day of returning to a foreign land, I even suffered from hunger, Miss Chisi, how could you live such a miserable life? Zhou Shang was unaware of Wei Xu's thought. Provoking emotions, so he smiled and led her to a small stall with a pergola. He took out copper jewelry and bought lamb steamed cakes and hot soup. The two of them found a seat and sat down. The stool has a short leg, the bowl is not washed clean, the mutton smell still lingers, the pastry crust is slightly dry, and the soup color is cloudy before breakfast could be eaten. Wei Shu picked out at least seven or eight mistakes, but couldn't contain the emptiness in her belly, causing her internal organs to tremble. After the restaurant owner who was holding the food left, she fixed her eyes on Zhou Shang tightly. When she saw him eating pancakes and drinking soup, he looked no different. She couldn't wait to grab the meat patty and take a bite. Fragrance Lamb with large chunks of fat is seasoned with strange spices, with a fresh and rich aroma that is not inferior to roasted meat at palace banquets. When chewed, it is full of paste and has a fragrant taste. Wei Xu picked up the sea bowl again and drank a mouthful of hot lamb soup. Xu Tan At this moment, everything was set aside, including impurities and fishy smells. Wei Xu quickly took a bite of cake and soup, and soon a piece of meat cake fell into her stomach. The empty heart finally warmed up a bit, and she became more energetic. Zhou Shang picked up the soup bowl and took a leisurely sip. His gaze cast from the edge of the bowl towards Wei Xu, feeling a bit inexplicable. The young girl in front of him was clearly extremely hungry, but he still waited for him to eat before going to eat. This was originally a gesture of courtesy, but Zhou Shang always felt a bit uncomfortable in his heart, as if he was trying poison for someone. Well, I think I overthought it. Zhou Shang had a strange expression on his face, shook his head, and dismissed the idea. At this moment, Wei Xu tore up half of the pancake in her hand, slowly chewing and swallowing it while secretly observing the vendors around her, estimating the population of the area. Although it was located in a remote area, there were still some rules and regulations in the cultivation of goods here. 100 copper coins and 1 silver coin, and 10 silver coins were exchanged for 1 or 2 silver coins, which surprised Wei Shu quite a bit. However, after seeing the remaining seal script character, Bao, on the copper jewelry, this surprise dissipated once again. After all, we still use Central Plains coins. Coinage is one of the foundations of the country, but it is evident that this cannot be achieved here. The silver coins circulating in the market are also from the central plains, indicating that the cultivation of goods has not yet taken shape. But I don't know if this coin belongs to the former or current dynasty of the central plains. If it were the latter, then this place may not be too far from the central plains. After finishing the meal for a while, Wei Xu also let go of these thoughts and took a leisurely stroll with Zhou Shang in the bustling city. After a few steps, Zhou Shang spoke respectfully. But I forgot to tell the girl that the blue moon dress she wanted has already been spun, and the embroidery on top is also done according to the pattern given by the girl. The child's mother has put in a lot of effort. Wei Xu nodded slowly, and a faint image of a silver-blue gauze material appeared in her mind. It was light, soft, and thin, like the moonlight under the clear sky, seemingly quite precious. She couldn't help but feel puzzled. How could Achi still go hungry if she could wear such a dress now? Thank you for the thoughtful and lovely reward. Continue to collect tickets for collection, asterisk, end of this chapter. Chapter 10 Thunderbolt You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Thunderbolt Just as Wei Shu was pondering, Zhou Shang immediately said. When the girl goes with the little family for a while, let's take the skirt together. After presenting the skirt, I believe the girl will be able to win the joy of the true master. It's hard to say that the true master can still reward the girl generously. We won't ask for anything else then, just ask the girl to give us a few good words, and we will be satisfied. Master. Reward. What is this person really talking about? M.O. Fei. M.O. Fei Wei Shu inexplicably panicked in her heart, 
and her outstretched foot seemed to never find the ground again, causing everything in front of her to instantly turn upside down. Hey 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 girl, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's their porcelain stall. The rough and chaotic screams seemed to be far away, and then Wei Xu's body lightened. Her feet were already off the ground, but a big hand like a fan steadily picked her up. Shocking cries echoed everywhere, as if many pedestrians had gathered, interspersed with a rather regretful voice. Oh my, brother, you have so much strength. Thank you, thank you, ha ha ha, thank you, brother. Zhou Shang slapped the porcelain vendor with a single arm and pushed Wei Xu back a few steps. At the same time, he cleverly pointed to the stall and said, Thank you, thank you. Big guy, take a look. I didn't touch it. Our girl didn't touch it. If something breaks, it's not our fault. Everyone on the side agreed, I haven't encountered it, and, I'm far away. The unscrupulous vendor used to quietly push the stall forward with his buttocks, trying to break several porcelain cups and demand large compensation. At this moment, seeing that he couldn't make it, he had to sniff his nose in disappointment and sit back. Wei Xu never fainted. Although she really wants to faint. At the moment when she tilted, the Dantian's internal strength suddenly erupted, running along the spine of the governor's meridian, rushing towards the wind mansion, and entering the Baihui. Her whole body immediately became energized and energized. The dizziness dissipated, and a corner of the fog in her mind was lifted. Wei Xu then remembered something she couldn't forget. Aki seems to be a slave. 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 I, I have become a slave. Wei Xu felt her eyes dizzy for a moment, and even with Zhou Shang's strong support, there was still a whirlwind in front of her. Did I actually return my soul to a servant? What is this? What is this called? However, the more unwilling or unwilling she is to admit, the more solid and clear the memories in her mind become. Chisi is indeed a servant. Absolutely true, like a false exchange. At this moment, when she looked at her clothes again, Wei Xu suddenly realized that her attire was extremely similar to that of the man who died along the well. Similarly, blue was not blue, and blue was not blue. In this city called, White Frost City, these clothes and colors are unique to the slaves of wealthy aristocratic families. I remember. I remember it all. Wearing such clothing and accessories in the White Frost City is actually a great honor, indicating that their identity is higher than that of ordinary people. After all, even a dog under that wealthy family is more prestigious than an ordinary commoner. In an instant, a wave of hot blood rushed towards Wei Xu's heavenly spirit, and she was trembling all over. Honor you. What kind of bullshit glory is this? This is simply a great shame. How noble is she, the daughter of a prince and the body of ten thousand chariots. How proud. Even when she was on the run and in despair, she never stopped serving her servants, and how many times has she been so subservient to others. However, this idea only belongs to Wei Xu. In Arcus's memory, she seemed to have some unspoken secrets or ulterior motives, so she willingly attached herself to the high gate and made a living driven by others. Miss Chi, where are you feeling unwell? Do you want to go to the clinic to take a look? Zhou Shangwu spoke loudly, and many pedestrians on the road stopped to look. Wei Xu's mind had already recovered, but her mood was still fluctuating. With eyes open and eyes closed, he transforms from the supreme being of the world into a tiny dust of grass. Who can withstand this? After several breaths of effort to adjust her expression, Wei Xu finally managed to squeeze out an extremely ugly smile and supported Zhou Shang's arm to stand straight before weakly speaking. Nothing. It's okay. I just felt a little dizzy just now. I guess I didn't sleep well last night, but now I'm not feeling dizzy anymore, so there's no need to go to the clinic. After speaking, she crouched down and bowed according to local etiquette, thank you very much, Uncle Zhou. Zhou Shang exclaimed, oh, and looked at Wei Xu calmly, then released his hand and said, that's good. 
He then asked again, I forgot to ask the girl just now, when will I return from vacation? Returning to the mansion. Wei Xu suddenly felt a bit confused. After frowning for a few moments, she reluctantly said, Ming. I'll be back before tomorrow evening. What kind of mess is all this? She didn't even remember which family's servant Achi's was, but the fact that she would return to the master's mansion to cancel her leave before tomorrow evening was undeniable. Wei Xu was extremely disheartened, but she also knew from the bottom of her heart that this was just a wisp of ghost occupying someone else's body. It was still too early to talk about the act of taking over and replacing blisters. Before we can talk about anything else, let's deal with the people and things that Archie should face first. But, it's really frustrating. It was easy to forcefully suppress all kinds of distractions, and Wei Shu adjusted her breathing, trying her best to maintain the natural expression and movements, and turned into a west-facing alley with Zhou Shang. The rain was falling incessantly, with no signs of slowing down. The sound on the umbrella surface was as dense as a drum, and a large rain curtain swept over the eaves, swaying back and forth in the strong wind. Wei Shu looked up at the sky. The sky was only slightly white, and it seemed that there was still enough rain to fall. The sound of the street market behind had been obscured by the wind and rain, making it seem somewhat distant. This alley is also very quiet, and the excitement at the intersection clearly does not extend to it. There are few people around, only the sound of wind and rain can be heard. As Wei Shu walked, she gradually became confused again. Why did Zhou Shang suddenly stop talking? Judging from his words and actions, he should still be quite flattering to Akasi, and he has been very attentive to her before and after. Since entering the alley, he has been unusually silent, completely different from the flattery and courtesy he just received. If it weren't for the other person's expression always maintaining a hint of humility, Wei Xu would have thought that he, like herself, had been soulfully changed. He refused to speak, and Wei Xu, who was already deeply concerned, became even more unwilling to speak up voluntarily. The two of them quietly walked through the heavy rain in the white frost city, from the east to the west, until they arrived at a wooden courtyard door with vines before stopping. Miss Aki, please come in quickly. Zhou Shang finally spoke and rushed forward to push open the courtyard door, letting Wei Xu in. End of this chapter